today we're going to talk about doing a Euclid's algorithm backwards. Backwards? Why on earth would we want to do an algorithm backwards and what would it even mean? Well, last time we were proving that prime numbers have the following property, right? that if P divides A times B, then P divides A or P divides B if P is prime. But when we were proving it, we used this very useful fact that if the highest common factor of x and y is 1, then we can express 1 as a sum of some x's and y's. So what we used was we used if the highest common factor of x and y is 1, then 1 we can write a sum number of x's plus sum number of y's equals 1. The sum r and s in the integers. So now, let's have a look at how you do that. And the way you do it is you use Euclid's algorithm backwards. So let's just try it, shall we? On a couple of numbers. Let's do, for example, uh, 7 and 33. 7 and 33. Let's just check in our heads that the highest common factor must be 1. Well, let's see. What are the prime factors of 70? That's 2 times 5 times 7. And what's 33? That's 3 times 11. So they've got no factors in common, so the highest common factor must be 1. But of course, if we didn't know in advance, if they, the numbers were too difficult to do in our heads, we could run Euclid's algorithm forwards in order to see what the highest common factor was. And in fact, that's what we're going to do first. So we apply Euclid's algorithm. Right, now remember to do Euclid's algorithm, first we say 70 equals some number of 33s plus a remainder. We keep doing division with remainder, right? So 33 goes into 70 twice because that's 66 and then we have 4 left over. So that's 2 times 33 with 4 left over. Then we sort of shift this number over there. So we get a 33 here, and we do division with remainder on 4. So 33, well that's 8 4s with 1 left over. Right, and then we can, we can, if we feel like it, write the last line in where we take the 4 over there, and we go 4 is 4 times 1, which is kind of obvious, you know. But that's the thing that sort of finishes it off and tells us that the highest common factor of 70 and 33 really is this one that we see here. The last remainder that we get is the highest common factor. So the highest common factor of 70 and 33 is shown to be 1. Now we've got some equations, right, involving some 1s and some 33s and some 70s. So we can change them all around, feed the numbers back in again. Uh, in order to get 1 expressed in terms of 70s and 33s. Because look, basically here we've got 1 in terms of some 33s and some 4s, and here we can get 4 in terms of some 70s and some 33s. So if we start at the top, so we feed the numbers back in, right? so this line, we turn it around and we get 4 equals 70 minus times 33, right? Now from this line, we get that 1 equals 33 minus 8 times 4. But we know what 4 is in terms of some 70s and some 33s, because we've got it right here. So we now substitute this into that 4, and we get that that's the same as 33 minus 8 times, now we put in the expression we got for 4, and now 
we gather together our 70s and our 33s. So how many 33s have we got? Um, well, let's see, we've got, over here we've got one, and here we've got minus eight times minus two, which is plus 16. So altogether we've got 17 33s, and we've got minus eight 70s, minus eight 70s, and so that, hopefully I've done it right, is an expression of one as a number of 33s and a number of 70s. And that's what we were trying to get, right? We started with 70 and 33, and we said we can express one as some number of 70s and some number of 33s. And we've done it here now. Should we just actually check that that's right? What's 17 times 33? Well, 17 times 3 is uh, 34 plus 17 is 51. So this is going to be 510 plus 51 which is 561. And 7, 8 to 56, so this bit is 560, so that is indeed 1. Phew, I did it right. So that is one example of how we go through Euclid's algorithm backwards to get 1 as an expression of these two numbers. And we'll do a few more examples now.